I don't know, should I be mad? Should I be scared? Should I be, I don't know, happy that I'm in my element fighting censorship and Justin Trudeau? I don't really know, but one thing I do know is that I need some help. I went into this interrogation by myself on purpose because I wanted to see what admissions I could get from them when they weren't on their guard, which I know they would have been had I attended with a lawyer. Well, it's lawyer in time, and we brought in the team that helped us beat Trudeau's lawyers in October. You'll recall, Justin Trudeau's hand-picked debates commission kept out David Menzies and Kean Bexty of Rebel News, as well as our friend Andrew Lawton from True North, banned us from covering the campaign debate. Well, we didn't stand for that. We went to federal court on a rush basis, and we beat Justin Trudeau like a drum. In fact, Trudeau had five lawyers, and look at this news, literally out this morning, Trudeau spent $131,000 of your taxpayers' money fighting us in court. I'll tell you, we spent $18,000 and we won. And one of those lawyers who won it for us joins me now today, Aaron Rosenberg from Relaw. Great to see you again. Always nice to see you, Ezra. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, you know, I'm, I'm fine with your level of billing. Don't feel any need to <laughs> double your bills. I think it's insane that the government spent $131,000 fighting us last time. It was a 48-hour battle. So I literally don't know how they even managed to rack up 131 grand in bills. I was pleased to pay you 18 grand. You guys worked nonstop all weekend and you won, which is the most important thing. 18 grand, money well paid. I don't even know how they spent 131 grand, but we beat them. Yeah, it's, it's really un unbelievable. And of course, in hindsight now, it seems like it was money well wasted. But, uh, you know, it was, it was a hard fought battle, no question about it. And it was a pretty close call, if you recall. You were in the courtroom with us. So, uh, but, but, you know, we're, of course, we're, we're thrilled that it was a victory uh, for the rebel and for free speech, uh, freedom of the press. But, uh, but there's no question that there is a disparity between the government resources and the little guy, yeah. the rebel. And, and that's why we're just so thrilled to be working on these types of files. Well, thank you. And it's just coincidence that we saw that news today because today is the day we fight back on this crazy book investigation. Um, you have reviewed the video that we just released um, where I have clips from my interrogation there. And there's just one thing I, I want to show you where one of the cops almost, it was like he was saying, do you want to unsay that? Because I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it was where I said, no, we chose to publish my election book during the election because that's when people want to hear. Uh, he, he says that to me. I felt like he was inviting me to get out of trouble, but I'm not going to lie. Of course we published the book during the election. Take a look. So when you, when you came to your decision, you're going to author a book, release a book in time for the election. And I don't have your own words, but online you, when you received a letter from uh, Madame Gigou, you did a, a blurb online that I watched and you speak about, of course, that it was released in time for the election. Which if, if that's your position today, that wouldn't allow you to have the exemption for, for advertising for a book. So that's why we wanted to clarify that with you. Perhaps you were misspoken when you spoke online? Or, so we're here to try to clarify. So that's a 30-year uh, RCMP veteran who's now working for elections commissioner. He also said, uh, like it felt like he was saying, I got you dead to rights on this. And he said one more thing, and then I'm gonna ask you to, to react to this. He asked me, did I ever contemplate registering with the government? Hmm for my book. Take a look at that. The knowledge that you would have or not have of the, of the election act, the Canada Elections Act, when you are planning the book and you, the, the, the new third party rules, because I believe there's some comments on your stuff as well about that, did you give any consideration of saying maybe I should register as a third party for this circumstance or maybe I shouldn't um, because of my interpretation of what I'm going to do? Or did you um, not make that determination? All right, I'd like you to react to those two clips because that's their case. Mm. That's, it, I, I think, I mean, unless they're trying to misdirect me, 
Their case is, I broke the law by writing an election book during the election because I didn't like Justin Trudeau, and I should have registered my book with the government registry as like a campaign election party or something. I think that's what they're arguing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty It's pretty amazing. Uh, the whole thing is incredible. The fact that you're in a back room in the election commissioner's office uh, talking about, uh, you know, freedom of the press, I mean, it's essential, right? You decide you want to write a book, you time it to coincide with an election, which makes absolute sense, uh, not only from, uh, you know, from, from a financial sense, but from the position of, you know, uh, dealing with the politics and, and, and what's going on at the time. It's very important for your voice to be heard during an election season. So the fact that they're trying to hold you to account for writing a book and promoting a book during an election, in my view, is crazy. They're implying I was interfering in the election. I believe I was participating in the election, not as a candidate, but as a journalist and a citizen. Um, I have those views honestly held about Justin Trudeau. It's no secret. I've been criticizing Trudeau even before he was the leader of the Liberals. Um, I want my elections Canada cops to be going after people who try and vote illegally, uh, people who try and vote twice, people who try and vote deliberately in the wrong place, people who steal money. Like, I want them to go after crimes. I can't believe they're putting five people minimum on the case of a book writer. And I started to go through the cases that they've prosecuted. I've never seen anything like this. Like, they actually have been going after bad dudes, people who falsify, like, their ballot, ask for a second ballot. Yeah. Go after those bad guys. I've never seen them do this before. Yeah. Well, that, well that's right. I mean... You know, clearly that can't be the intention. Uh, what, what you're bringing about, what you're bringing to the public sphere, uh, dealing with the issues of the day, of holding our government to account, uh, these are critical issues that need to be aired during an election. So uh, if the law, if the intention of the law is to prosecute people like you that are going out and educating uh, people on the situation, uh, the, on the leading governing party, then that's a real problem. And so if they do choose to, to prosecute you, then uh, I do think it would likely be a worthy battle because, uh, you know, we can't have laws on the book that stifle freedom of the speech, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and your ability to go out there and talk about the issues. Well, one of the things that I said to the cops is my plain reading of the law is that I didn't break the law. And this is the weird thing. When they sent me their threat letter over the Christmas break, it included a paragraph that outlines the exemption for books and the promotion of books. So this going after author business was on the minds of Parliament when they wrote this law because they said, oh, right, we'd better have a free speech carve out for books and the promotion of books. So that's the words in there. And Elections Canada put that in their threat letter to me over Christmas. So obviously they know, of course they know their own law. What I don't get, Aaron, is why they would proceed against me and my book, The Lebranos, in the face of that clear exemption, but not go after 23 pro-Trudeau books that were published at the same period. To me, that shows bad faith on the part of the investigators or the prosecutor. Maybe bad faith is the wrong word, but it sure is a huge question mark. Why? Well, well, that's absolutely that's absolutely right. I mean, I, you know, it, it's it's quite telling that one book out of. 25 some odd books uh, that deal with, uh, you know, with, with issues surrounding the election during the election period is the one that's now being uh, investigated uh, by the, uh, the elections commissioner. So uh, I, I, I do sense that there is, there are some problems here. And I think that there, there is some issues that we need to look into. I mean, certainly it raises some concerns um, on my end, uh, but ultimately, um, whether it's you or anyone else, I don't think we want the government or government bureaucrats uh, reviewing books, reviewing authors, reviewing publishers uh, because they're publishing books during the election. It goes, in my view, against the intention of that exemption, and it goes against the basic 
on fundamentals that we operate under uh, in a democratic country. I am certain, Aaron, that if this were 10 years ago, and if it were Stephen Harper, who was the prime minister, and his election office were calling in left-wing authors who had wrote critical books about him, I think this would be front page news across the country, top of the news on the CBC broadcasts. People would be calling for his resignation, the resignation of Elections Canada uh, officials. But because it's Justin Trudeau and I'm a conservative critic and the rebel is not the favorite of the media party, I think it's going to be silence mm. from the CBC, from the media party and from all the free speech civil liberties groups that would normally be squawking. Canadian Civil Liberties Association, Canadian Journalists for Free Expression, Penn Canada, Canadian Association of Journalists. They're all utterly silent, just like they were silent when you and I and True North went to court over the elections debate. I think the other media don't actually care because they're liberal. Well, you know, what I can say is that it's pretty clear that the effort to investigate this issue is happening in a, it what appears to me a pretty uh, backroom scenario. It was literally a back room. <laughs> there were no windows in that room. Yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, your reporting on this is very important because otherwise uh, I imagine that these types of things do happen behind closed doors. That's what's troubling about it. But as I said before, I mean, I think this raises very serious concerns about um, about the, the sorts of investigations that are being taken on. Um, and in particular, the, the issues that arise when uh, when selective complaints are investigated. Um, I, I think this is a, a very serious issue that you're bringing forward and we're just thrilled to be part of it. Well, thank you. Uh, I like your fighting spirit and I was there in court when you and your colleague David just, it was, it was like watching a beautiful symphony, you two and then the lawyer for True North. I loved it. You guys were outgunned and outspent yeah. by the feds and you won. Okay, let me ask you a question and I want to preface it by saying, you're our lawyer, so you give us some advice sometimes that's private and it's mm. subject to solicitor client privilege, mm. which means the government can't know about it. And I don't want you to divulge any secrets online because I know they're watching me. They told me they watch my videos in the government. What can you say, though, that doesn't give away a solicitor client privilege about how we'll fight back? And the reason I'm asking is a lot of our viewers, they want to sort of know the battle plan. Mm. My hunch, and we haven't talked about this much, is that right now I really don't have a lot of remedies because they haven't really done anything other than ask me some dumb questions. But they're implying they might subpoena documents. They're implying um, that they might charge me. They're, like, there's a lot of things they're hinting at. Yeah. They won't even show me the complaint, which I think is it's so Orwellian. Hmm. Is there anything at this stage to do, or do we have to wait till they actually pull the trigger? Well, ultimately, I think it depends on um, on how willing of a in, of a of a uh, investigated party you're 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 willing to be. I want to fight tooth and nail. Yeah, every like every inch. I I want to do everything I can. Yeah. I think you know that. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I I I, I know how you fight, and I love it. I think that um, you know, even based on the letter. Right, and I think it, it's clear to see that uh, there's an implication that there's a way out uh, if you play nice. Right, and that's why I went down there. They yeah. said if you're smart, you'll come and talk to us. Yeah, and, and so I think that by um, by by pushing back a little bit, uh, you're causing a little bit of a dilemma for them. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I, I think the the idea is to fully uh, participate uh, in the investigation to the extent uh, that they require you to. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it, it's it's a serious investigation as you uh, as you described earlier. They go after serious offenses, um, and they can give out some pretty serious uh, some some pretty serious punishments. So it's important to cooperate in the investigation, but at the same time, it is important to to push back, to fight back, and and ultimately to uh, to prevail upon what in our view, appears to be uh, an undemocratic law. All right. Um, I have a few ideas I want to talk to you about privately because they might be dumb ideas, they might be smart <laughs> ideas. I think you and I should talk privately. And if we have a letter or an application that we're going to file, we'll show our viewers the finished product. 
because I don't want to give Trudeau's cops early warning of mm -hmm. what we're doing. If we're going to slap them with some sort of suit, I want them to, to get that not one minute earlier than they deserve. So let's you and I have a private conversation. But I wanted to show our viewers how seriously I'm taking it, that we're dealing with the law firm that beat Trudeau like a drum. I like saying that. <laughs> But that's also affordable, thank you, and that believes in freedom. Mm. Um, so we'll talk more off camera, but I wanted to prove to the viewers that we were lawyering up, that we were doing it smart, that we're not going to roll over. And look, we spent 18 grand with David and Aaron in October. Well worth it. I think, depending on how f hard these guys fight, this could be more, like if they go away, obviously there's, there's no cost. But if this goes to a full fight, like you, your bill, and, and like I say, it was yeah. barely 10% what the government charged. Yeah. Um, it could be 50 grand if this thing goes to like a, a week long trial. Well, that's right. I mean, and again, we're dealing with the same power dynamic, the power imbalance. They'll have six, seven, eight lawyers. They yeah. had five lawyers against you at the Debates Commission. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And so and that's what I think is going to be the, the, the big difference. It's always an uphill battle when you're fighting against a bureaucracy, a government with endless resources. That's the challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's so important you know, that, that, uh, that we keep fighting. Well, thank you for that. My friends, if you want to help, go to saverebelnews.com. And by the way, if you have an MP or an MPP or an MLA who claims to believe in freedom of speech, maybe ask him about this. Maybe if the Conservative Party or Canadian Civil Liberties Association asks you for a donation, maybe you can say, well, only if you go fight for free speech. Otherwise, maybe give it to... Aaron and David to help us fight this one. I think that this is the civil liberties fight of 2020. This is how Justin Trudeau is going to play. So if you can help us out with even 10 bucks, I'll have Aaron and his colleague David, who's not here today, I'll have them on whenever we have news. I'll email you if we have updates. And so help me God, we will push back against this little censor named Justin Trudeau. That's it for today, my friends. Aaron, it's great to see you so in nice. studio. Thank you for coming here. I swear we will fight till it's done. And even then we won't stop fighting. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.